What's going on everybody? In today's Swift tutorial, we're gonna be talking all about persisting data, uh, namely user defaults. Now, uh, as you can see, I have an app on the screen and user defaults is meant to save just, you know, small things. We'll get into that later, but uh, just to show you the app we're gonna build, uh, you see we have light or dark mode and we're gonna persist that uh, preference, whether they prefer the light mode or the dark mode, we're gonna save that. And then also, as you can see here, you can uh, name your pet. Uh, this pet, his name is Harper. And uh, if you hit save, we're gonna persist that name. So every time you open up the app, uh, the name you typed in there will appear. And we'll also get into, you know, what types of data you can store in user defaults, some of the security issues, and some of the pros and cons of using user defaults. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain, a 12-week in-person bootcamp where you can learn web development, iOS development, and UI UX design. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad, and it was part of my process to become a full-time iOS developer, which I have been here in Silicon Valley for the past three years. Now, I even had a member of my community go through the Dev Mountain program, and now he is a full-time iOS developer. I even did an interview with him about it on my channel here. You can check that out, and you know, disclaimer, I did that interview before Dev Mountain reached out to sponsor the channel, so there's no bias there. And uh, you know, he did it. I, like I said, myself am a bootcamp grad. So uh, if you feel a bootcamp is for you, uh, I think it works, and I recommend it. Uh, now, if you are interested in learning more about Dev Mountain, there will be a link in the description. Uh, so check that out. Before we dive into some code, let's talk about user defaults for just a second, uh, namely what can you store in there. Uh, and here in the user defaults documentation, uh, you see it provides convenience methods for accessing common types such as floats, doubles, uh, integers, boolean values, and URLs. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, you want to save just small pieces of data, strings, booleans, integers, uh, that type of stuff. But before you go saving anything, I want to talk about the security issues because at the end of the day, user defaults is just a plist in the libraries folder of your app, which can be accessed, you know, through other apps, like without even jailbreaking. So certain things you don't want to store in user defaults are like user passwords, API keys, uh, maybe like uh, a Boolean that says if they've unlocked the premium, like, you know, is premium version unlocked and that unlocks your whole premium version of your app. You don't want to do that because there are apps out there that will let people get into the user defaults and edit things how they want. So uh, be careful what you're storing into user defaults. And then the last, you know, gotcha to watch out for is you don't want to store large amounts of data uh, in user defaults. So as you can see here, you can store NS data. And I've made this mistake earlier in my career, but you know, you have all these images, you convert the images to data, and then you store that data in user defaults. You don't want to do this because your user defaults gets loaded into memory. And if you have a bunch of high res images, you know, broken down into data, not a good use of memories. So again, it's not really secure. So be careful what you store in there and then don't store large amounts of data because that's not memory efficient. All right, let's dive into some code. As always, I'm going to run through the starter project just to give you some context. You see, I did build it mostly in storyboard. Uh, we have a segmented control up here, UI image view uh, with, for the pet image text field here and then a button pretty simple stuff the text field is a custom class of name text field uh, as you can see here i built that and the main reason i did that is just so i could refactor out all this style uh, upgrade because i want to keep this main view controller where i'm going to do most of the user default stuff uh, as clean and clutter free as possible i don't want a ton of code in there so uh, as you can see here i have you know name text field dot update style and that takes care of all the styling updates from the dark mode to the light mode uh, because that's not what this tutorial is about we're all about user defaults uh, and similar stuff with my uh, essay button so that is the basics of uh, the starter project we can run through this uh, view controller real quick you can see i'm setting up my pet image view uh, what i'm doing here is just making it a circle instead of a square uh, I have this function called update style. This is what gets called uh, on did change style segment to control. So when they tap light or dark, I call update style and I'm basically just animating the background color, you know, from dark to light and then updating the style of the text field to have dark text versus light text uh, to adhere to the dark mode. So uh, that's really all that's going on in the starter project. Uh, just wanted to go over that for context, but let's get into the user default stuff. All right, so the first task we're gonna tackle is to save the style preference, which is, you know, the light or dark mode. Uh, so down here, below our save button tap function, let's create a new function called uh, save style preference. And then uh, here's where we're gonna access our user defaults. But first, uh, up here in our variables, we need to get access to our user defaults. So we're gonna do let defaults uh, equal user defaults dot standard. And we do this for a couple reasons. Uh, one, I don't wanna type out user defaults.standard every single time. And we only have to define this once because really there's only one user default. So even if you defined another instance of it, 
uh, you're basically accessing the same thing. So we'll just go ahead and create this up here on line 18. And then uh, down here, now that we have defaults, now we can start setting values. And uh, our st style preference is we're gonna save a Boolean. This is dark mode on line 17. And as you can see here, when you're touching the, uh, you know, did change style segment from light to dark, I make is dark mode uh, equal to whether the segmented uh, control is selected on index one because it's really only zero or one light or dark um, So basically if it is equal to one is dark mode is true if it's not equal to one Which is the dark section uh, is dark mode is going to be false So I want to save that boolean is dark mode uh, in user defaults. So down here. Uh, we just write this one line of code defaults dot uh, set and then you can see there's values uh, here in the autocomplete. You see value any, bool, double, float, int, etc. We want a bool because that's what it is. Uh, so bool and we want to save is dark mode because that's what we're updating. And then for key, uh, this is what we can name whatever we want. Uh, prefers dark mode. Now this is, uh, you know, what's called stringly typed. You want to avoid these strings because we're going to be reusing them. And uh, so for example, when I try to access this Boolean is dark mode from my user defaults, I have to tell it what key I'm going to. And I have to type in prefers dark mode again. And if I have a typo and I say I don't have the S at the end of prefers, it's not going to work. So uh, you want to avoid this. So up here, we're going to go ahead and create a struct real quick. Uh, there's many ways to do this. I'm just doing this real quick. Um, call it keys. And then we're going to do static let uh, prefers dark mode uh, equal. And then I'm just going to copy paste to avoid any potential typos. So now I have that. And while we're here, uh, static let uh, pet name equal pet name. And then we'll uh, line up my equal signs. So now I have my two keys. And then you'll see I can access that uh, down here instead of this string. I can do uh, keys dot uh, prefers dark mode. And again, there's multiple ways to, to do these constants. Just doing that real quick. Uh, so now you can see line 56, I'm calling my user defaults. Uh, I'm setting a Boolean. The Boolean is dark mode, which again gets flipped back and forth based on the segmented control. And then I have to give it a name essentially. So for key, and then it is keys dot prefers dark mode, which again is this string up here and you'll see how this comes into play in a little bit so right now this function save style preference is saving this boolean into user defaults so when do we want to call this uh, again we want to uh, call this whenever the they change the segmented control so again here i'm changing the boolean so we want to make sure we definitely do it after that uh, so let's go ahead and do that there uh, save style preference that is going to save whatever they picked into user defaults uh, and then i update the style which changes you know the background color and everything like that so we have it saved, cool. Next, we wanna check for it when we load the app because that's the whole point of persisting the data. So you know, when the app loads again, you have that data. So uh, we're going to create another function uh, down here called check for style preference. So func check for style preference. And now we're gonna retrieve from user default. So let's do uh, let prefers dark, dark mode defaults. Uh, now, instead of setting the value, we're going to retrieve the value. So you see here we have bool for key uh, because it's a Boolean. That's what we, we saved it as. So bool for key. And then this is what I was talking about. I would have to type out prefers dark mode and hope I don't make a typo. But now that we have our uh, constants here, we're going to do keys dot prefers dark mode. No typos to worry about. And there you go. Now, uh, if you notice the very first time we run this app, this is going to check for it. Um, so if it doesn't find uh, a value, it's gonna default to false. Like you're not gonna get a nil back. It's gonna default to false here if there is no value. So that's what we want because we want a fresh user to have the light mode. That's our default setting. So we don't have to do anything here. Uh, the only changes we have to make is if it comes back true, now we wanna set everything to the dark mode. So if uh, prefers dark mode, we want to update our is dark mode boolean. So is dark mode uh, equals true. And then we want to update our style now that we have flipped to dark mode essentially. So we'll call update style, uh, which again is up here on 38 to 43. That is what just animates all the style changes from light to dark mode. And then uh, just to keep the UI consistent, we want to flip the uh, segmented control to be selected on one, which is the dark mode uh, selection. So we do uh, type of segmented control. It's called my style segmented control uh, dot selected index. And we want that to equal one. So that's just going to basically flip the index to one. Uh, so now the UI looks uh, right. And then before we run, we got to call this up here in view to load. So let's call check 
for style preference and we'll go ahead and run it and now it should be the light mode to start we'll flip it to dark mode uh kill the app and then run the app again and it should default to dark mode uh right away so here we are on light mode when i flip to dark remember that's what triggers everything now that is going to save that boolean into user defaults cool we're done now if i flipped it back to light it would change it back to false but we're not going to do that so let me move this over uh let's kill the app cool we're done uh now if we didn't have this user default it would default back to that light mode but because we've saved it in user defaults we're calling check for style preferences in view to load if that preference comes back true we're going to go ahead and you know flip to dark mode essentially so let's run it and it should default to dark mode and there we have it we're on dark mode so that is saving the style preference now let's go ahead and save the name of what the user types in now this is very similar except instead of saving a bool we're saving a string so let's go ahead and create our function uh called let me give you some room here funk uh save name and that is uh defaults dot set now we're setting the value now you can see here we have any bool double float int uh there is no string so we have to save it as any uh this just means that when we retrieve it we have to cast it to a string uh when we retrieve it when we're saving it we don't have to do that so set value and now we want to do name uh text field dot text and then for key and again instead of typing out the string we did this earlier keys dot pet name uh, so there, that is saving it. One line of code, and then where do we want to call it in our save button tapped here up on line 54. Let's go ahead and unstub that, and let's do save name. So now when the user taps the save button in the app, the name will be saved. Um, but now we need to retrieve it, just like we did with the Boolean. So uh, similar to this function here, we want to uh, you know check for the name. Because if we do retrieve a name, we want to show that name in the text field. Uh, if we don't retrieve a name, we just want to leave it blank. So let's create that function, um, check for saved name. Give me some room up here. And uh, so the first thing we wanna do is basically, let's create a variable called name, and we wanna set it equal to defaults uh, dot value uh, for key. Now you can see this returns in any optional, right? This value for key string. So uh, keys dot uh, pet name. So right now, because it's returning in any that's an optional, it doesn't know what type it is. So we need to cast it as a string because that's what we saved it as. Um, now, because this is an optional, we're going to use uh, nil coalescing because if this does come back nil, uh, question, question mark, we want it to be a blank string. So like I said earlier, if we have a name value, let's use that name value, uh, cast it as a string, do that. Uh, if we don't have that name value, let's leave it blank. And then finally, we do name uh, text field dot text equals name and uh, there we go, that is retrieving it. So let's go ahead and call this uh, check for save name again up in view to load. So you can see we're checking for style preferences, check for save name, and let's run this and see what we got. So here you can see we're in dark mode because that was our preference at the time. Now we can name our puppy, uh, let's name him Harper. And as you can see, we can toggle back between light and dark, that changes the UI. Uh, let's go back to light mode just to prove that, you know, our, our defaults are working. And I want to save his name, uh, you know, Harper is the name. So now when I close the app and rerun it, we should get light mode and the name Harper should persist. Uh, so let's stop it, run it again. And here we are, light mode, Harper, just for good measure. Uh, let's, you know, puppy and dark mode, save that and uh, stop it run it again. Now we should get dark mode puppy because we're persisting that data. And there you see dark mode puppy, good to go. So that is basic user defaults. Again, you can save a lot of little stuff, but don't make it, you know, passwords, API keys because it's not secure. And then be careful with breaking down images into a lot of data because it does get uh, stored into memory. You don't want to do that. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing. I put out Swift news every Monday and then a tutorial or two throughout the week. See you in the next one.